Well, my dad had, 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 uh, had the entrepreneurial spirit. Hard worker, good imagination, and uh, really proficient at what he did. And he had this dream that he always, that he wanted to have his own business. My mother was uh, a good supporter, and so they decided to, uh, to come down to Florida. He liked Central Florida because it was in the center of the state, equally distant pretty much between the two coasts, between Jacksonville and Miami, between Orlando and Tampa. I enjoyed being out in the woods, being outside, and watching the way he uh, looked at the sand samples and determined whether they were going, whether it was worth fooling with or not. He finally determined that he had enough acreage there that he could uh, put in his sand mine. He proceeded to uh, buy used equipment. Everything was used. Most of it came out of the phosphate mines. It was all somebody's junk. And he put it all together, built his dredge, built everything. He was a pretty good artist, uh, pretty good with uh, drawing pretty much what he wanted to draw. And I remember seeing him draw that over and then put the uh, script standard in the middle of it and uh, put quality and service in there. And that's the way he started his, his uh, mining operation. Well, the more I went to school, the more I knew that's all I wanted to do. I loved looking at the sand piles. I loved uh, everything about it. He sent me to the University of Alabama because they were the uh, closest university to teach mining engineering. The last conversation I had with my dad just as we were starting that uh, second semester, I was apologizing for not making good grades. He says, son, just remember. He says, this is the first time you've lived away from home, been on your own. He says, so you're learning a lot. He says, you're also learning about people and it's so important to learn about people. And he said, just remember where one fella leaves off, another has to begin. And I, those were the last words I ever remembered hearing from him because they were just indelible. Next thing I got was a message that my dad had died. And then when I got out there, my mother says, well, uh, you, you're gonna represent me now. I want you to run the production end out here. Well, the older, some of the older people proceeded to quit because they wasn't gonna work for this 20 year old kid that was just out of college and didn't know anything. Some of the people that I was gonna depend on, I didn't have to depend on. So I had to just work with the people that were left and, uh, and they were good people. But I could see a lot of things that weren't being done right. But my mother, oh gosh, huh? she had lots of spunk, lots of courage, lots of guts. She was a lot of times so much the backbone of my dad when he would be so good, maybe too good to people, she would kind of reel his horns in once in a while a little bit, you know. A couple of years after my dad had died, she remarried, and uh, so this gentleman comes in as sales manager. Well, I had to go out with him to begin with and tell him the difference between concrete and cement. And because he had a uh, background in fertilizer, it also gave me a chance to, to uh, learn so much about so many different things I've never had a chance to know anything about. Because I didn't have my dad to talk to, what I did was I went through every piece of correspondence that, he, that I could find that he had to find out what he had written to somebody or what somebody had written back to him or had written to him or what was in there that he was looking at. Because I was trying to get into his brain to try to figure out what he was going to do. Then that got me into looking at more equipment, different types of equipment. One of the first things that I, that I did after I got out there, we had all diesel dredges. I told my mother, I said, I'm going to build an electric dredge. She said, oh, they did one of those things one time. And he says, very, very dangerous. Somebody's going to get killed. You can't do that and all this. I said, I think we can. Let me, let me take a chance. So I always will give her so much credit for having so much faith in me. She never made it easy for me. She didn't say, oh yeah, go ahead, I'm in favor of all these things like that, you know. We built this electric dredge and we had all the safety apparatus that it needed and everything and it worked fine. It worked, did a really good job for us. And then later on, I bought a classifier that I'd read about that had multiple uh, settling pockets in it and that we could make several different gradations at one time. Built a uh, more railroad track we laid that track ourselves. We went from maybe loading uh, as many as, as uh, 40 cars a day. We could load 100. We've loaded as many as 100 rail cars a day and sent out of there. When my dad started the, built the first drying plant, 
Then we were loading 100 pound bags. We had a bagging machine that would put out about five or six 100 pound bags a minute, put them on a little hand truck, go over and stack them up and everything. And then we went over to uh, machines that uh, had four spouts on them and were all pneumatically operated and electrically operated and we could do 20 or so bags a minute. Then we uh, automated the uh, conveyor system and the uh, palletizing system. Everything is, is done pretty much automatically now. And then we use forklifts to uh, move the material around on the floor and things like that. So it's a lot easier today than it was. Those systems are evolving all the time and we want to, at some point, get into the latest technology there. In the same way with plant automation, the same way there too. As a kid, seeing so much of the family that didn't have anything, and they didn't have any ambition to really have anything, but my mother and dad, I thought, had that little extra, that entrepreneurial spirit, and they supported each other in it. And so I, I just wanted to see that survive. Well, I've got, I've got three sons that are, that are in the business, and then I've got, I've got grandsons uh, in the business. But for these young people to want to come into that business, and they know it's a tough business, but they all have little different ideas about things, but I always tell them, they're the future, I'm the past. And the, and the thing about it is, for them to want to come into this business is just an honor as far as I'm concerned.